Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear I say, Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you, for if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and expect to get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them, and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as also your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give thanks, give, and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in turn be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, this Gospel is really incredible. There's about 25 homilies in here, but I'm going to focus on stop judging and you will not be judged. Stop condemning and you will not be condemned. You know, as human beings, it's really easy for us to judge. I mean, that's just a part of our makeup. And when I was in formation, uh, we had internships. And, you know, I had, a, had some good ones. I got to work in a soup kitchen and got to meet some really incredible people and learn how, how good the poor could be. I, I taught RCIA at Purdue and found that there were students that hungered for God even in today's world. But my third and last in, internship was in prison ministry. And all the guys in my class did prison ministry. Now, those guys were assigned to the county jailhouse. My vocations director, or my, my, my director of formation, in his infinite wisdom assigned me to the big house, the, the state prison penitentiary at Bunker Hill in Peru. 3,000. 600 full maximum security prisoners. Wow, I don't have to judge them. They've already been judged. I don't have to condemn them. They've already been condemned. These guys are scum. They're animals. And indeed, some of them were. When I walked into the prison for the first day, there was a mini riot in the yard. All of us in the group were very fearful. We were only 60 yards away from this mini riot, and the guards did get it under control, but they struggled to do so. 
But the rest of the, 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 the internship went well until the last day. So my last day of internship, we're getting ready for mass, we're prepping the altar, all the regulars are there, and in walks a new guy that we've never seen before. He was a man mountain, probably 6'4", built like a wedge. He had arms as big as tree trunks, bald-headed, tatted on the arms, tatted on his chest, tatted on his face, head, eyelids were tatted. This was a bad dude. I mean, I could tell. Just by looking at him, I knew this was a really bad dude. And he walks up to the priest. He says, I need to talk to a priest. Father looks at him and says, are you Catholic? He says, no. He says, well, I'm, praying, I'm getting ready for confession, then mass, then I can talk to you. This big guy walks up to Father Adam Malman. It's about like this. Are you okay? Okay. Well, I don't want to invade your personal space. I need to talk to a priest. And I'm going, oh, this is not going to go well. This isn't going to end well. I mean, this guy is, I mean, he's the leader of the pack. He's the enforcer. I mean, you can tell just by looking at him. So, Father Malman, I mean, he's not even sweating. He says, I told you I could talk to you after Mass. If you got to talk to somebody right now, you can talk to Ed Bowes over there. He's in formation to be a deacon. I'm going, gee, thanks, Father. And he says, oh. he says, okay. So Father Malman points to this door on the side. I'd never been through that door before. He says, you can talk to him in there. Oh, this may not end well. So anyway, go through the door, and we're in a 10 by 10 room, and it's full of musical instruments for worship. And there are two chairs. Side by side. No, you're fine. You're fine. I'm not going to sit down. We're sitting this close. And I'm scared to death because I've condemned this guy. He's scum, right? He's in the state penitentiary. And when he starts to talk to me, it doesn't get any better. It gets worse. He looks at me and says, I've really screwed up my life. Okay. I'm here on my second 25-year bid. They don't have bids. The inmates, they, they're on sentences. They have bids. Immediately, I'm thinking, 25 years, the guy didn't learn the first time. He's not in here for jaywalking or selling a joint. He's violent. There's no windows in this room. There's no guard. There's no telephone. And I'm scared to death because of the way this guy looks, because he's condemned, because he's in prison, because he's scum, he's an animal. He says, I just got here yesterday. I just got off the phone with my mother. She tells me that dad has stage four lung cancer. He's got three to six months to live. They won't let me visit him. He can't travel. He's so sick. And I won't get out to see his funeral. And at that point, we're sitting side by side. This scum... This guy who has no feelings, no soul, you don't have to, falls over into my arms, sobbing. He's wrecked, and he sobs, and he cries. The only thing in the room is a, is a clock. I held that guy in my arms for seven minutes, and he sobbed uncontrollably. Here's the guy that is an animal. He's scum. He's in state prison. But he's got a soul. It may be covered up with a lot of sins, a lot of violence, a lot of hate, a lot of anger. But there's still something in there. And I had condemned him being an animal. And he so desperately needed comfort. He so desperately needed human touch. So why come to a priest? Well, maybe some of you already know. If you go into the prison and you show emotion like that in the general pop or even to your roommate, 
you are labeled a witch. I'm sorry, I mispronounced that. Take away the W and put a B. And that is the worst thing you can be. You will be persecuted, you will be hounded, because you cannot show that weakness in prison. And he came to me for comfort. And I looked at him like he was an animal. It's a very, very long drive home for me. Two days ago, I told you about my shame with, with magic. And I was really questioning whether not only was I cut out to be a deacon, but was I cut out to really be a Christian. Because I saw so little humanity in that person who so desperately needed a touch. So what is the message I'm trying to give you today is that we, we can't judge and we can't condemn by appearance alone or by past history alone. You know, and we all do it. You know, you walk into the grocery store and there's a teenage girl and she's got purple hair and you think, I think, you know, I think, go out, what a freak. And yet, one day when our car was broke down, on Highway 24 between Monticello and Logansport, here came a, a man and a woman on a motorcycle with purple hair. They stopped and offered us cold water. So the challenge is for us is to clamp down on judging. I'm not saying don't be safe if you're walking down the street and it's midnight and there's a group of unsavorly looking characters saying, come into the sally with us. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm saying you should really look into your heart when we see others and judge them by their appearance. Judge them by their past sins. Because everyone, even that thief on the cross, can repent and be converted.